ready to go. This is part of a long, long homestand for Arkansas. Your umpires this afternoon, Jermaine O'Gwen will call balls and strikes. Scott Mayer, the first base ump, and Tatum Stolting is down at third base. A little bit chilly today, but it's dry and the sun is partially shining. Can't be uh, too picky in the month of February in this part of the country. Gosh, you cannot be picky. Sunshine in February, it's pretty warm outside. We've got a little bit of the wind, but you can't ask for much more than that. Next pitch is up high to even the count at one. This hitter, Mia Jarecki, junior, batting 340 on the year. Has a little bit of pop in the bat from that leadoff spot. In there for a strike. Kennedy Miller, the battery mate for Robin Heron. And they've been really impressed with this freshman from Georgetown, Texas, Kennedy Miller, behind the plate. That's not an easy role to step into as that's fouled up. But they really like what they've seen. Absolutely, and Coach Diefel, she just spoke about how she's done such a great job of staying in the moment. And you know, that's tough to do as a freshman, let alone being the catcher behind the plate. But she's done a great job of staying in the moment and just working extremely hard behind the dish for her pitchers. Jarecki, that's part of that role in being the leadoff is being able to foul off pitches, be a tough out, and kind of give your teammates a live look at a number of pitches to see what they're in for when it's ever for their turn. This ball is hit well to left center going back, looking up, it's gone. Mia Jarecki battling off two strike pitches, finally got something to hit and she sends it out of here. Beautiful swing by Mia Jaraki. Talk about a first at bat bomb for SDSU. And we see it right here. She has an aggressive at bat, batting off pitches. This ball is up and in on her hands. And she gets her barrel out in front and stays through extension, driving it over the left center field wall. And you just hit on it, Josh, talking about being the leadoff hitter, having an aggressive approach up at the plate, and it paid off. Fouled off two, one, two pitches. We're sending that out of here. Jarecki with her second homer of the season. Here's a Kayla Bernard. Defensively for the Razorbacks, Bree Ellis at first, Kylie Halverson at second, Lauren Kamen's ends at short, Hannah Gamble down at third. Kramer, Johnson, and Carter, the outfield left to right. This wind's kind of a crosswind right now, Sydney, from right foul pole to left, but you patrol these outfield grounds <laughs> about as much as anybody. What, what could we expect today? Absolutely, well, it's understanding what direction the wind is blowing and just knowing that off of the bat, the path that the ball initially takes, you may have to adjust, and it's all about having great communication as well in the outfield. Foul tip finds the catcher's mitt, and a strikeout for Heron, and that's a good rebound from Robin Heron, and that's kind of, Sydney the toughness that we saw from Heron last year, even as a freshman, if she'd give up a big hit, it didn't really seem to phase her. Absolutely not, and the confidence that Robin Heron has, way to respond after that leadoff home run, and it is that low rise ball that is just so nasty. Brings up Emma Osmondson, and Arkansas will want to be careful pitching to her. Right fielder batting three hole. She's already enjoyed a great career but has really taken another step forward, a gigantic step. She's hitting 455 coming in. This has popped up, riding the line, and as she crosses it, Kamenzen makes the catch. And that's a great job by Kamenzen right there, sticking with it. And Josh, we just talked about the wind. It started about right behind shortstop and continued to carry. So great job sticking with that by Kamenzen. 
So two down now, and Lindsey Culver will step to the plate. It's the first homer that Robin Heron has given up all year. This is her eighth appearance, sixth start, and 37 and two-thirds innings. So she's not somebody that's prone to giving up the long ball this season. Last year gave up eight in 73 innings pitched, which is not a lot. Playing of that ball hitting the support post echoes out throughout Bogle Park. First of two meetings between these two this weekend. Razorbacks will continue this Woo Pig Classic tomorrow against Southeast Missouri and Florida Atlantic before facing this South Dakota State team on Saturday. And then one more game Sunday against Southeast Missouri to close things out for the Hogs. That's what it looks like defensively for the Razorbacks. Notice there, Kylie Halverson. It's been a nice transition for her to second base so far this year, the 2-2. And that sneaks through. Two out single for Lindsey Calder. And what a job by Culver offensively up at the plate. She battled all at bat. And this is an off-speed pitch by Robin Heron that she keeps her hands back on, lets it travel, and just drives it back right where it came from. Brings up Alexa Williams. Second left-handed bat in this lineup. Man, Josh, this SDSU offense, they are attacking early in the count and are absolutely taking some hacks when it's through the heart of the zone. You mentioned the offensive approach and what associate head coach Josh Berkey was kind of preaching to this team and what their philosophy is coming into the year. When you start to see things like that kind of come to fruition, is it infectious for the entire team? Like, okay, this, this is working. This yeah, is absolutely, especially passing the bat. And, you know, one thing that I love that Coach Berkey talked about is just being intentional and having purpose with every swing that you take. And when you dial in the zone and you don't expand your zone, you're able to be intentional with every swing. That off speed way out in front, picked up by Miller, fires down to first to complete the strikeout. And this is a lineup that any way you slice it or whatever combination you put out there, it really strikes fear to opponents around the country in Courtney Diefel's tenure here, Sydney, but maybe thanks to the tough schedule they've played already is gonna kinda help prepare them to try to run through this gauntlet. Absolutely, and the fact of the matter is, is for SDSU, they've already played tough components, and it's by design from Coach McSweeney, but this Arkansas offense is well balanced. It's the speed, it's the gap to gap hitting, and it's also the long ball. Senior against underclassmen here to start it off in the bottom of the first. Although, Reagan Johnson sure didn't play like a true freshman a year ago. And the old saying with coaches is you never really know what you're gonna get from a freshman. If you could be sure of one, I think Reagan Johnson was probably it. And she did not disappoint. What a great freshman year. Just within her first year wearing Arkansas across her chest, she has already set, you know, and is within the single season records um, with her average, her 79 hits, four triples. Uh, she had a hot start being a Lady Razorback. She's ahead 2-0 here. Knew she was gonna get something to hit and knocks it back up the middle, right on cue for the native of Carn City, Texas. It took her only 71 games to reach 100 career hits as you look at those eye-popping numbers from a year ago. In the 18 stolen bases, and Coach Courtney Diefel talked about it, before you know committing Reagan Johnson, she was out on a mission to find an athlete like Reagan Johnson to add to this staff, and Reagan Johnson has done her job in that leadoff spot. Brings up Bree Ellis. No, in the world of the transfer portal nowadays, you kind of have a similar outlook as you do on freshmen to an extent in the sense of, you know, will they fit into our program? 
safe to say that already in the early going, the Auburn transfer Bree Ellis has fit right in here at Fayetteville. <laughs> she absolutely has, and from being moved to the two hole, when she was moved to that two hole, she homered back to back games. She just steps up big, and having Reagan Johnson on base and then Bree Ellis to follow, you know the ball's going to be put on in play, and with Reagan Johnson's speed, just to allow her to advance is huge. Foul tip finds the catcher's mitt. Yeah, Ellis had been in the cleanup spot, then they bumped her up to the three hole for three games, and then as you mentioned, now for the fourth straight game, she's hitting two hole. And that's one of those where we've seen Courtney Dyfel make that move in the past of oh! Ellis, big swing put on it here and puts Arkansas in front. Two run shot for Brie Ellis, her sixth home run of the year. And just about to say, <laughs> when you're hot and your bat's working, you want as many turns during a game as you can get, so move them on up. Absolutely, Josh, and when you're hot, you are hot. And for Brie Ellis, that was a beautiful backspin line drive, two run home run. Look at this swing, it's down in the zone, a little bit on the outer part of the plate. She drives her backside, gets her barrel to it, and stays through it. That is a picture-perfect swing by Brie Ellis. Career home run number 40 for Ellis, the former SEC Freshman of the Year. So both teams utilizing the long ball in the first inning. Nia Carter to the plate. For Nia Carter, I, I mean, her numbers show just offensively she is out of this world. But so far this season, one strikeout through 58 at-bats. That's how well she sees the ball at the plate and her plate discipline. It's kind of started to be a recurring theme for, you know, maybe a strength that a lot of Arkansas hitters possess is understanding what their zone and then not stretching that zone for anybody. Going back to one of your old teammates, Hannah McEwen, who was one of the best at that that there ever was. Absolutely, and Hannah was just had a great eye up at the plate, didn't expand the zone, and she forced the opposing pitcher to bring it in the zone, just like Mia Carter. That was only the third home run that Shannon Lacey's given up this year in 30 innings pitched. And Carter not making things much easier as she draws the walk. And Nia Carter last season for Iowa, 479 batting average with 101 hits. And again, it goes to plate discipline, but she's also able to move her feet in motion. She's got great barrel control. She has got all the tools in the toolbox. She possesses it all up at the plate. Christina McSweeney talking with her starting pitcher, Shannon Lacey. Brings up Ryland Hedgecock. Ryland Hedgecock on the young season, hitting 348. Pitch down, and she's ahead 3-0. and Do you give her the green light here? Uh, being Ryland Hedgecock, I would, but for Shannon Lacey, she is a drop ball pitcher, keeping the ball low in the zone. And in that last shot, we saw Ryland Hedgecock. She's made the adjustment. She's standing in the back of the box to be able to read the drop, read the spin on the ball early. That's in for a strike. Drops right in.
Same pitch, just different location and in for a strike. And Lacey battling back here, it's a full count. Missed at that time. Good plate discipline by Hedgecock, not to be nervous after taking two straight strikes. Here relaxed as Arkansas has worked their second straight walk and all four Razorback hitters here in the bottom of the first reaching safely. <laughs> Brings up the freshman Kennedy Miller. The first dose of the freshman catcher for the home crowd last weekend. Hit 571, driving in seven runs. It's a good way to become a crowd favorite right Abs out of the gate. Absolutely. First weekend playing at home as a freshman, hit over 500. I would say she got her first taste of Vogel Park and did it in a very effective way. It did. Got her on the foot on the deflection. So they are loaded up here with nobody out. It's only the second batter that Lacey has hit all year. And right now for Shannon Lacey, just settling in, understanding with bases loaded, if she can stick to the way that she attacks hitters, keeping it low in the zone, get that ground ball force out, that would be huge. They don't have any reservations sticking with her here. This is a, a very veteran pitcher and somebody that played for Coach McSweeney and Coach Berkey at Arkansas Tech before making the move to Brookings. She was all tournament team in the Summit League a year ago, so knows how to pitch in pressure situations. And they trust her to try to get out of this without any further damage here. A former Jackrabbit, Kylie Halverson at the plate. Transferred to Arkansas before last season. But a lot of her former teammates still playing for South Dakota State. And there's Halverson as a Jackrabbit, part of an NCAA tournament team and some great programs there. Two one is hit well to center. Going back in front of the track, Carrillo makes the catch, but it's productive for Kylie Halverson. Sack fly makes it three to one here in the bottom of the first. Callie Halverson stepping up and doing her job, driving in a run. That's a great read off the bat by Carrillo in center field to be able to secure the out. By, but Kylie Halverson stepping up big. Let's take a look at the swing. It's a down pitch that she gets her barrel to and stays through it. Again, good read by Carrillo, but Callie Halverson pushing another run across the plate. 17th RBI of the year for Halverson. Hannah Gamble steps in. Hard hit, grounder to third. Nice quick hands by Abby Gentry to get a piece of that. If that gets down into the corner, that's going to score a run. Absolutely. And that was an absolute shot by Hannah Gamble, but good job by Gentry getting her glove on it. As you said, Josh, if that gets passed, that's easily a run, maybe two.
one chopper to short, they're gonna come home with it, and it's in time. Nice play by Rosalind Carrillo. It's not a play that you have to rush, and she just made sure the throw was online. For Rosalind Carrillo, that's a great job coming and getting that chopper ground ball that's a little bit up the middle. Way to get the force out there. And for Shannon Lacey, already having three runs up on the board by Arkansas, that's a great job getting that ground ball out. All nine coming to the plate for Arkansas here in this first. 1-0 to Reagan Kramer. Strike right at the lower edge. Kramer will try to shake that one off. That sounded like a high, like it was high. Shannon Lacey. Hailing from Dover, Arkansas, which is just a little bit under a two-hour drive to the southeast of Fayetteville. A lot of Arkansas ties love to see it, being able to play in front of their home state today. Skied up into left. Culver underneath it makes the catch, and the side retired. So Lacey and the Jackrabbits able to get out of it while limiting the damage. She'll face Abby Gentry. start things off. One of two transfers coming from the state of Mississippi, their previous college stop. The other for Arkansas, Reese Burline, who transferred from Mississippi State. And oddly enough, both of those players, natives of the state of Arizona, coming to Arkansas. Well, there's an Arkansas native at the plate, the freshman Abby Gentry. Knocks this through the 5-6 hole. Solid piece of hitting by Abby Gentry. Again, Morgan Linestock pounding the, the pounding the zone, low in the zone. She does a great job of driving her backside and getting to this pitch, driving it through the 5-6 hole. Brings up Rosalind Carrillo. Looking to play some small ball here. Gamble comes up and fields the bunt. Sack bunt 5-3. Carrillo does her job though, getting Gentry representing the tying run into scoring position. It's early in the game, 3-2 ball game. That's a great call to move the runner into scoring position at second. See a pinch runner here. Kaylee Kardash, sophomore from Fishers, Indiana, will come in and run at second base. Pinch runner in from South Dakota State, number five, Kaylee Kardash. Linestock a 122 ERA this year. This is the fourth time she's pitched in relief. Also has three starts under her belt. But a better than three to one strikeout to walk ratio and limiting opponents to a measly 121 average. She has been really stingy here to start her Arkansas career. Coach Dyfel, she talks about that she is just that fiery competitor that the team feeds off of. And you've got to have someone like that in the circle. Taken off. Good read on that pitch out of the hand. Kardash able to take third. Great read by Kardash. The second that ball hit the ground, she was taking off to third. It's that kind of base running instinct that you have to have. That's a great read. Yeah. 
taken all the way on 3-0 as Linestock fires in a strike. Linestock a 2.56 ERA last year for Southern Miss. Count full now. Middle infield playing in. They want to keep themselves in the lead if they get the opportunity. And called strike three. Livestock comes battling back after being behind 3-0. Great response by Morgan Linestock. Keeps the ball low in the zone, and this pitch for a K looking, she elevates it right at her letters. Infield can return to normal position now. Back to the top of the order, though. Not out of trouble yet. Mia Jaraki Homer to start the ball game. Pretty impressive at bat, <laughs> too, that we saw from Jarecki first time up. She absolutely applied the pressure her first at bat. She was all over it. I feel like if you've got somebody who's new to the leadoff spot in the lineup or if you want to show them what right looks like, you just show them that video. And not even necessarily the home run so much, but just how to battle with a two-strike approach. Fouled off a pair of one-two pitches before that home run. Appealed to first, said she did go. One and two now. <laughs> Called strike three. Back-to-back, -back backward Ks for Morgan Linestock to end the inning and keep Arkansas in front. Staff. Just the way that she came in and immediately changed the culture seasons ago and the way that it's just progressed is outstanding. Reagan Johnson leading things off. Top of the Arkansas lineup as they brought nine to the plate in the first inning, but left the bases loaded. Now Shannon Lacey Two hits, two walks, and a hit batter. That was the result of the first five batters of this game that she faced, and she really performed like a veteran after that. They stuck with her. She stayed calm and got out of it without any further damage. She found a way to dig in and get the job done, and it's a 3-2 ball game, still early in the game. In those moments, it's very easy to get outside of yourself, to get a little bit rattled. But like you said, Josh, she just settled in and she found a way to get out of it. Back to the circle. Lacey picks it up, fires over to first. Johnson, who's been such a tough out lately, they're able to get her here. It's back to Bree Ellis, who had the big swing in that Razorback first. And let's take another look at the swing by Bree Ellis. Absolutely mashed it. And when you're hot, you're hot. Ellis has drawn a walk in four consecutive games, and she might be in line to expand that streak after that early home run, putting the South Dakota State pitching staff on notice. I would imagine she's going to get very few pitches that look enticing to swing at here, <laughs> especially with them getting Johnson out to start the inning. Shane and Lacey here. She's going to work around the zone and try to get Briellis to chase. Now, Ellis, the home run against Wichita State last Saturday, that was her 100th career hit. And she takes a four pitch free pass here. 
And for Lacey, that's not what you want as she was working around the zone to Brie Ellis, but Brie Ellis, she sees ball to strike just so well. Brings up Nia Carter. Strike on the inside edge. Leading the Big Ten in average on base and hits. Saw earlier those 101 hits, a new Iowa program record. And in addition to that, she's uh, just the second player in Big Ten history with over 100 hits. Redshirt senior from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Rapidly approaching 200 career games with a career average over 400. And being a former left-handed hitter slapper, Josh, the thing that I just love the most about Nia Carter's numbers is the 527 on base percentage of her career at Iowa. Um, obviously still remaining true, but being a left-handed hitter slapper, that's what you want to see is that high on base percentage as well. Now that's one way to get on base. Got hit as that ball was buried right out of the hand early on. Another look here. Take another look at this. She squares around the bunt, and as she's in motion, it gets that back hip. Now that was like a heat-seeking missile right from her hand. She had, <laughs> even if Carter wanted to move, she really had no chance. Now listen, too, as a slapper, when you're in motion and also squaring around the bunt, I mean, it's a great thing that she pulled her barrel back so fast. It's, it's tough to do. Two on, one out, Ryland Hedgecock, the hitter. She walked her first time up after working a full count. <laughs> Hits this into right, playable for Osmondson, makes the catch. Wind has shifted a little bit. At the start of the game, it was more of a crosswind, right pole to left, and now it's pretty much blowing straight out to center. It absolutely is, and that's why it is critical for both teams in the circle to keep the ball low in the zone. Big second out after issuing a couple of free passes, and so Kennedy Miller now, who got hit with a pitch her first time up. Miller with an RBI in three consecutive ball games. And for Kennedy Miller offensively, one thing that makes her so good at the plate, especially as a freshman, is the ability to make quick adjustments. That is critical as a hitter to be able to make quick adjustments. And you know, at this level, when you are stepping in your freshman year, the pace of play, it speeds up. Turns on this, a frozen rope <laughs> pulled foul. Let that ball in just a little <laughs> bit more and it's a shot to the left field. Ah, that's a good pitch by Lacey, but also a good job laying off of that by Kennedy Miller being down in the count. That's a pitch that you'll see at times hitters typically chase. Popped up, tough play to make. Abby Gentry was on the move. That looked like it bounced back up and hit her. Huh. Appears to bit, be fine. Yeah, a little bit funky spin off the bat, but for Gentry and Carrillo, it's a great job being aggressive. 
One more hard step and she secures that catch. Full count now. The payoff. Slice foul. She's battling. They're both battling. For Kennedy Miller, this is a big moment right here that she could step up in, driving in another run. For Shannon Lacey, she is digging in. Payoff pitch number two. Grounded to short, throw comes to first, side retired. Lacey and the Jackrabbits able to get out of another mini jam. Two left on for the Razorbacks. Just everyone around her to elevate their game and to be better. Back to work in the circle for Morgan Linestock. She came on in relief of the starter, Robin Heron, last inning. And gave up a base hit to the first batter she faced, but then calmly got the next three, including Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the inning. And this knocked through the 5-6 hole, Akela Bernard. Another ball driven through the 5-6 hole by this SDSU staff. Brings up Emma Osmondson. That thing, ball dipped in for a strike, just caught the upper edge. And the thing that I think that is just so interesting about Emma Osmondson that Coach McSweeney talked about is she was initially just a slapper. All she did was slap. And when they came in, they transitioned her to just standing in and swinging away. And what she's done since making that transition. Right back to the circle. Line stock appears to be okay, but they will certainly check on her. Just to make sure here, I think. Another look, see where this hit. And this is a shot right back at line stock. She tries to get a glove on it, just isn't able to. She tries to hang with it and get the out, but she's gonna get back on the rubber and keep going. Yeah, she gave the the nod, she's okay. Bunt laid down by Culver, just angles foul. Just got the barrel around it just a little bit too much. If she would have stayed more flat through the zone, that spun it back up the middle. And her job right here, if she gets the bunt signal again, it is just to get it down to move the runners. Corners come crashing in. Gamble picks it up, fires over. Sack bunt 5-4, but Culver does her job. And two in scoring position now for the Jackrabbits, trailing by a run. The art of bunting, Josh. We just don't see it a lot nowadays, but it's an easy way to move runners into scoring position as we see with runners at third and second. Infield on their toes and line right to Gamble. Massive second out. That is a huge out by line stock. Let's take another look at this pitch. It's low in the zone. Williams just gets way too out in front and early and pulls off of it too quickly. Yeah. 
First pitch strike to Jocelyn Carrillo. One of two Jackrabbit home runs so far today. Her second of the season to lead off the second inning. Out of Palmdale, California. One third of the Carrillo sisters on this Jackrabbit roster. Seems like we see that more and more with sisters getting the opportunity to play on the same team. It's pretty special when you get to be blessed enough to play on the next level as, as, long, as well as along with your sister. Can only imagine how much less strenuous that is on the families as well, right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have three different softball games you've got to keep track of, no. you've got one. Swing and a miss in the dirt. They'll have to complete it. And Kennedy Miller does. So the first two reach safely, but Arkansas and Morgan Leinstock able to work out of it and keep themselves in front by a run. This Josh, 10 homers in each of the last three seasons of her career encompasses part of those 54 home runs. Pretty impressive. First pitch here lifted up down the right field line and a long run to make but Mia Jarecki, her former teammate, able to make the play. Not an easy play to make, and by Mia Jarecki, that was a great read off of the bat, sprinting almost close to foul territory to get that first out. Brings up Hannah Gamble. The battle here of two Arkansas natives. Gamble from BB, Arkansas. So Gamble's the type of player that Coach Dipel is praised for understanding the highs and lows of the game, going back to an injury she had early in her career and kind of gained some maturity in watching things from a different perspective. And somebody that, 0 oh, 2 taken for a ball. Somebody that I think you look at, Sydney, and you say, she could go 0 for 20, and you would still have faith that she was going to get a hit the next at bat. She's just that kind of player. She's that type of player. And the fact of the matter is, is this game's hard. There's going to be the ebbs and flows. You're going to have the highs, and you're going to have the lows. But for Hannah Gamble, even through the highs and the lows, she stays consistent. Trying to leg this out, and she does. Gamble, who smoked one to third last time up. Gentry was able to knock it down and prevent it from being extra bases. And a little bit of trouble getting this one cleanly, and Gamble takes advantage. Let's take another look at this. Hannah Gamble has the speed off of the end of the bat. For Gentry, just not able to secure it right off the bat. Drops right in for a strike. Was scored as an error here at the ballpark. First error of the game for either side. And another strike taken by Kamenzen. We're seeing good situational pitching though from both sides <laughs> over the last couple of innings. Absolutely, and for Shannon Lacey, the last two innings, she has just been filling up the strike zone. Dover, Arkansas, Pottsville High School. Pitched at Arkansas Tech at the Division II level under Coach Christina McSweeney. And Josh Berkey made the transfer to Brookings whenever the coaching staff made the move as well. And she gets a strike out here. Kamen's in set down for out number two. But there's some of those players, they were obviously thrilled when Lacey wanted to come to Brookings with them because of the type of talent that you see right here. But <laughs> it's one of those where there was very, uh, very little doubt that she would be able to have success at the D1 level. 
And Coach McSweeney, she talked about it. There was no doubt in her mind that Shannon Lacey would get to the next level and absolutely thrive. It was an Arkansas Tech team that was very much used to winning conference championships in the Great American Conference and making it to the NCAA Division II tournament in the Central Region, one of the toughest year in and year out in Division II softball. I think it's really cool just between Coach McSweeney and Berkey and then, you know, throwing in Shane and Lacey, you know, making the move to SDSU. I, just the gel and the way that they've gone throughout their career together is something that is really special. I think another fun nugget about Shane and Lacey and Coach McSweeney's relationship is that Coach McSweeney has been coaching her since she was nine. Okay, so not just in college, has been working with her since she was nine years old. Kramer draws the walk. Two aboard here with two outs. Fourth walk Arkansas has taken today. It's back to the top of the lineup in Reagan Johnson. Base hit in the first. They got her back on a ground out to the circle last time up. Johnson able to calmly take that purpose pitch for ball one. Team leading 333 average in conference play last year. Don't expect a freshman to lead you in that category, but Johnson did. It was a table setter all year long. Slow roller to first, picked up by Williams, who applies the tag, and the side retired. Arkansas strands two. And after three innings, Razorbacks in front of the engine that helps with RPI. First pitch strike for Morgan Linestock. Came on in relief for Arkansas in the second inning and has pitched pretty well. He's given up a trio of hits but has three strikeouts and pitched around trouble. Zabby Gentry leading things off. Won a state championship with Bryant High School last season. And I hear, Sydney, that Bryant's pretty good at producing baseball and softball athletes, if I'm not mistaken. I would have to say so. You know, I, I did not go to Bryant, but I may be a little bit biased with some relations coming from <laughs> Bryant. But no, nah, it's a really great high school. And a fun fact, uh, SDSU played at UCA this past weekend, and she was given her state championship ring at UCA after one of the games by her former high school coach. Uh, so pretty cool to be able to wear SDSU across your chest um, and then to receive your state championship ring in college play. And how special that must have been. And not to mention in Arkansas softball for high school. She is the top offensive, offensive excuse me, hitter in 16 statistical categories. Goes down in the record books for average runs, hits, runs, doubles, triples. 32 home runs in her high school career. Remarkable. Leading that Hornets team to the Class 6A championship. And Bryant, of course, notorious for producing great softball and baseball players. And alluding to a moment ago, Sydney married to one of those, Evan Lee, former Razorback, and now in the 
Washington Nationals organization as line stop notches her fourth strikeout. Able to sit down Gentry. Line stop, fourth K of coming in in relief. This drop ball just falls off the table. And you know, what we're seeing here, Josh, between Linestock and Lacey, I will say they do complement each other well in what they each have in their arsenal. They're both drop ball pitchers. They both throw off speed. The fact of the matter is, is both of them the last two innings have filled up the zone, but have also adjusted, throwing low in the zone. And as we just saw there, occasionally elevating the pitch up in the zone. And for Arkansas's offense and SDSU's offense, it's changing their eye level. Pitch didn't miss by much. It's a good job framing that behind the plate by Kennedy Miller. Carrillo, the 2022 Summit League Player of the Year, knocks this through the 5-6 hole. Won that Conference Player of the Year award a year after current Arkansas second baseman Kylie Halverson won it. 2021 Summit League Player of the Year. South Dakota State going back to back and back to back NCAA tournaments. Carrillo part of both of those teams. And of course in 2021, South Dakota State got sent to none other than the Fayetteville Regional. They were right here three years ago. Arkansas won that game for nothing. Razorbacks would go on to win the regional overall. Taken for a strike. One and two now to Dumont. <laughs> Count even at two. Got her swing in. Five strikeouts for line stock. Racking up strikeout number five. You could see it there in line stock's expression. She is fired up. Again, this drop ball being ahead in the count, it just falls right off the table. Well, line stock's been hard to handle in any role this year, but as a reliever coming in, three relief appearances, over 11 innings pitched, and just one earned run. It's not allowed any today, and two and two thirds of relief work. She had a huge weekend in Arizona two weekends ago. In that stint of being out in Arizona, she threw 13 innings pitched, had 15 strikeouts, in the 13 innings that she threw. For her, that was returning to the home state, a native of Scottsdale. <laughs> Taken all the way there as Jarecki ahead 3-0. Get me over strike. Jarecki is already homered today. Started off the ball game that way. And she'll take a walk. And there's been no shortage of base runners in this game. 
Both teams have had at least two aboard now in every inning so far. First walk for Linestock. Deals a first pitch strike to Michaela Bernard. And so talking about that state championship that Abby Gentry and Bryant High School won, they defeated Cabot High School, which Michaela Bernard was on that team and she and Gentry the best, and I do mean the very best of friends. So that had to have been can't even imagine the emotions <laughs> for those two competing against each other for a state title. Absolutely, compete against each other in the future, play with one another. They do have a very, very special bond. Coach McSweeney has talked about just over the years, uh, fighting through adversity with one another um, and just have created that bond that is just so strong and very rare. 2-2 two -two now. Bernard had uh, committed to play at Arkansas Tech before Coach McSweeney and Associate Head Coach Josh Berkey made the move to South Dakota State. And Bernard decided she wanted to follow and they have all become very close. And it was Bernard who, after committing to Arkansas Tech originally, told the coaching staff, hey, you need to recruit my best friend, Abby Gentry. She's pretty good. They were looking for a corner catcher, and the rest is history. Payoff pitch through. Runner coming around. The throw cut off, and it's a tie ball game. Bernard with her second hit of the game. And we are all square at three. Tie ball game here. Akela Bernard just driving it past. Lauren Kamen's in at shortstop finding a way to dig in, be gritty, and score a run for this SDSU offense. Brings up Emma Osmondson, who lined one off of the pitcher line stock last time up. The Jackrabbits, single runs in the first, second, and here in the fourth. First run of the day not coming courtesy of the home run. Arkansas played it all three of theirs in the first. And with Osmondson, that new approach to the plate, it has resulted in an increase in everything, the strikeout numbers way down as well. She's gonna be a nightmare for opponents for the rest of this season, has already put together a great career. The hitter off balance. Kamenzen has come out of the bullpen for the majority of her appearances this year. This will be her sixth time coming on in relief. Last weekend, one relief outing that went one and a third against Wichita State, no earned runs. And four of her previous five relief outings without allowing an earned run. Comes in in a bit of a pinch right now though. Heart of the order due up for South Dakota State, Emma Osmondson, who's been leading the charge this year, hitting 455. Looked like Glinstock was going to be okay this inning. A couple of strikeouts, a base hit in between, but then the walk and then the RBI hit. Absolutely, and with that walk, you know, it's critical to not get free passes, runners on base. And a Caleb Bernard just stepping in and having that gritty at bat. Grounded to first. Bree Ellis touches the bag herself. Cammons and out of the bullpen. This time up. Any chance they give her anything to hit here? Still think they're going to work around the zone with Brie Ellis leading things off. You want to minimize 
leadoff hitters getting on base as much as you can. Um, so I think we'll see Shannon Lacey here work around the zone, but she's going to have to bring it in. With the wind blowing out to dead center today, outfielders playing about as deep as you would see an outfielder play, just a couple of steps in front of the warning track. Smoke to third, Gentry knocks it down, makes another good play. We are seeing third base be the hot corner so far today. And for Abby Gentry, her reaction at third base, she does such a great job of keeping her glove low and being able to glove these hard hits. That ball's on the outer part of the plate that Bree Ellis pulls. And props to Gentry for sticking with it and securing the leadoff hitter out. Looking for the element of surprise, Nia Carter. Has been aboard safely both times already this afternoon with a walk and a hit by pitch. And for Nia Carter, she just puts so much pressure on the defense, constantly keeps them on their toes because she has the ability to stand in and drive the ball. She can slap. She likes to utilize the short game to set the defense up, bring them in. fouled out of play. You know, Josh, Coach Courtney Diefel talked about for Nia Carter, she just has that steady, just presence and just that high level consistent consistency at the plate and practice, whatever the case may be. But she says that she has so much confidence. And I'd say so with numbers like that. <laughs> Absolutely. 13 straight batters without allowing a hit for Lacey. And you can make it 14. Arkansas has reached safely three times on a couple of walks and a hit by pitch, but after the first two batters of the game had a hit and then an infield single later in the first inning, no hits since then for the Razorbacks. She has pitched a contact and letting the infield just eat everything up. Yeah, I mean, she's doing what she does best, keeping the ball low in the zone and allowing her defense to work back behind her. And outside of that first inning, she has really settled in well and just has pounded the strike zone. First pitch strike to Ryland Hedgecock. Lacey along with veteran Tori Kanishi. Those two have started the bulk of the games this year. But Caleb Bernard, the only other player that's started one in the circle. But today the ninth start for Lacey, 11th appearance overall. Since that first inning, it's been bend, but not break. Arkansas forcing her to work out there, though. You see the pitch count now already up to 80. You don't see that very often when you're not even through four complete innings. That pops and gets through. Hedgecock will cruise into second, standing up. Well, that was a tough ball to read. Went right over the base and right past Gentry. And for Gentry, she was already playing behind the bag as this just cuts right over the base. Hard to secure as it takes that hop off the bag. But for the Arkansas offense, you'll take a two out double by Ryland Hedgecock. Ryland Hedgecock's third two base hit of the year. Here's Kennedy Miller. Come on. 
right after the first pitch. She got pegged in the first inning. Worked deep into the count before grounding out in the second. Three of her last four games have been multi-hit performances. Freshman out of Georgetown High School in the state of Texas. I have to thank Sydney for catchers. It's kind of an enticing thing to know that you're gonna go and play for a head coach who was not just a catcher, but a great catcher and a professional catcher in Courtney Diefel, who never gives herself enough credit, by the way. She does not ever give herself enough credit uh, where that is concerned. Uh, but yeah, to be able to learn from one of the best, um, it's pretty special. Oftentimes, you don't see head coaches that you know were former catchers, um, and so to be able to play again for a former catcher and to be able to have that inside um, is a very special thing. Staying alive here. And I'll tell you, I'll give you a little little nugget. I've seen Coach Courtney Dyfel catch while being pregnant. It's a pretty impressive thing to see, <laughs> let me tell you. Sharp grounder gets through. Arkansas back in front. Kennedy Miller hanging in there, and that ball was blistered. Blistered it was, Josh. And for Kennedy Miller, just stepping up big like she does. This ball's on the outer part of the plate, and she just sticks with it, driving it past Roslyn Carrillo at shortstop. Hit so hard, it gets all the way to the wall to drive in two more runs for this Arkansas offense. And for Kennedy Miller, she was dialed in that at bat. Second double, ninth RBI of the year for the freshman. Mentioned that streak of 14 straight batters without a hit for Shannon Lacey, and then Arkansas back-to-back -back doubles with two outs. Retake the lead. And for the Arkansas offense, with the last few swings that they took putting the ball in play, they're focusing more on that drop ball that she's throwing about thigh, belt thigh high versus going for the one that's about knee level, allowing her to leave it a little bit higher up in the zone. Halverson lifting this one into right. No problems for Osmondson. Arkansas. Set up, but very, very gritty at bats. They're attacking early in the count. They're not expanding the zone, and they've barreled a lot of balls up. You have to be pleased with that approach when it is, you know, yes, 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 no mentality. It's an aggressive approach, you know, obviously versus a passive one. And it goes in line with what Coach Brecky has talked about as far as what they've worked on. You know, obviously honing in in the zone, but also just staying consistent with the rhythm of the game, you know, speed it up, slow it down, and just overall being a very sound hitter, a sound offense. And they're displaying that. Robin Heron, the starter today, coming off of a perfect game last time at home, the second in Razorback history. Aaron pitched one inning. Morgan Linestock came on, one batter into the second. Goes two and two thirds in relief, allowing just one run. And passing it off to Hannah Kamen's in now. Kamen's in came on and got the final out the Razorbacks needed last inning. Lindsey Culver, one of four in the lineup today that was in the lineup when South Dakota State came here in 2021 for the NCAA Regional. 2021 seems like an eternity ago, and you think, how could there still be four players 
left. There's even more, actually, players left over from that team, but four, in fact, in the starting lineup today. This time they get Culver, who already had one hit in the ball game. Couple of three unassisted plays induced from Hannah Kamins in the lefty. Big cut at that first pitch by Alexa Williams. Couldn't find it. Huge cut by Alexa Williams, but that is just a power pitch to start off the count by Kamins in. Razorbacks in the midst of a 17-game homestand. Started last weekend with the Razorback Invitational. Continues this weekend through the Woo Pig Classic. But nearly a full month's time between games played away from the friendly confines of Vogel Park as Kamenzen gets her first strikeout, sitting down Williams. And Kamenzen just absolutely attacking the outer part of the plate to Williams. This ball just has such late break as she throws this curveball in the outer half of the plate. You know, it's pretty nice to have that lengthy of a homestand, Josh, before you get into conference play as you are traveling and, you know, sprinkle in those midweeks. It's really nice to be able to have that lengthy of a period to be able to play in your home field. Well, one thing that allows you to do that is you have people really lining up to want to come here and play. Such a beautiful part of the country, beautiful town, beautiful ballpark to play in. Absolutely, and the atmosphere and the environment of this ballpark when the fans and a snag by Cayman Zinn right back up the middle. Great glove work by Cayman Zinn. Barreling the ball, give a hug over there on first base. Love the hugs. She's absolutely barreling the ball. She's seeing the ball well, and she's attacking early in the count. Typically, that first pitch strike, it's going to be there as a strike, and she's jumping all over it. We've got a change here from sister to sister. Scheduled batter Lauren Kamen's end, and instead, it'll be Hannah. She's going to get a chance to hit. Hannah's made the most of her opportunities so far this year. Sydney, five of nine at the plate with six RBI. And that is absolutely making the most of your opportunities. She gets the job done in the circle and she gets the job done up at the plate. We always talk about versatility, being able to be versatile on defense. And, you know, she's versatile on the mound. She starts, she closes, she comes in in relief. Steps up to the plate. She's just versatile all the way around the diamond. And you know, one thing that they always say and talk about is the pitcher's eye. She pitches, she sees the ball really well up at the plate because she knows. Has that intuition. Coming through. Pinch hitting one of the hardest things to do in all of sports and wow she has been dynamite now six of ten at the plate this year and this pitch it's an off-speed pit pitch she does a great job of keeping her hands back and just piecing it up through the five six hole they'll re-enter lauren to run you know, one way you can tell them apart, if you can't see the jersey number, is the handedness. Lauren 
and Hannah, the twins, but Lauren is right-handed, bats and throws. Hannah, a lefty. I found that interesting when they first got to Arkansas. Led to a little bit of investigating, Sydney. <laughs> Do you know more than in one study, that is, more than 20% of twins are uh, opposite-handed. There you go. That's, <laughs> that's the way you know. These are the reasons you tune into the broadcast, so we can give you life, <laughs> valuable information like that. One thing that helps with the switching of that uh, situation, though, in terms of the lineup card, is that Lauren Kamenzen was actually penciled in as the DP, and then they moved her to shortstop to start the ball game. Ryland Hedgecock was penciled in as the shortstop and then moved to the DP, but you can switch that out. So you can do a variety of different things knowing how to work that lineup card. Courtney Dyfel and Matt Michael. Two one to Kramer. Ball three. Not only is that a cool costume, but it keeps <laughs> your face warm on a chilly afternoon. Protects the protects the wind, spicing it up a little bit. Just bringing some fun. <laughs> Payoff. Kramer right at first, stepping on the bag for a double play. Oh my goodness. What an effort that was by Allie Boyle. She had just come into the game this inning to play first, and that was an incredible effort. Allie Boyle with the absolute snag as this ball is cutting away across her glove side. She hangs with it and turns, gets the double play. That's as good as it gets. Welcome <laughs> to the ball game. Johnson trying to bunt. You see Lacey now up over 100 pitches. And the two corner infield positions changed in this inning. Cheyenne Masterson, the new third baseman. Two, bounce to the right side. Jarecki is on it, makes the play. Side retired. Arkansas gets the first two aboard, but Shannon Lacey again, pitches out of trouble. Cheyenne Masterson to lead things off. Taking this spot in the lineup of Abby Gentry, the seven hole. Masterson, another one of those players who played here in 2021 in the Fayetteville Regional. Had a hit in that game.
Lifted up to shallow center, running in. Johnson covers the ground as good as anybody. <laughs> She absolutely does. Uh, she covers so much ground in the outfield. And right there, she was playing a little bit in, but just got such a great initial read off of the bat, sprinting in to make the catch. Coach Courtney Dyfel said she's got one of the best first steps I've ever seen. You can count on her to pretty much cover 70% of the outfield. And in this game, you have to have an aggressive first step, base path defensively out of the batter's box. And that's Reagan Johnson. And I'll tell you, Josh, between Reagan Johnson, Nia Carter, and Reagan Kramer, not a lot of balls are dropping in the outfield no. amongst the three. <laughs> Carriel lifts this up into right center. Carter there to make the play. Kamen's end has retired all six she's faced now since coming on relief in the fourth inning. And for Kamen's end stepping in, she's just doing a stellar job of keeping the ball low in the zone, occasionally sprinkling in that off-speed pitch to get the SDSU offense out in front. Olivia Bolin pinch hitting here for the Jackrabbits. In the nine hole for the catcher, Brooke Dumont. One plate appearance on the year for Bolin. She got hit by a pitch. Couple of Nebraska natives battling it out here. Anna from Valley. Bolin from Lincoln. And for Coach McSweeney here, giving some pinch hit at bats and changing it up on defense, it's a close ball game. It's still early in the season. You're wanting to mix it up to give other players this experience to step in and prove what they can do. Lifted towards left center, and there's Johnson again. Just makes it look so easy. Another one, two, three inning for Hannah Kamenzins. And Arkansas in front, four to three. Former SEC Freshman of the Year socked 34 home runs in two years there as a 290 hitter with a near 400 OBP. But has really taken it to kind of a, you see a more productive level this year. She was striking out one in every four at bats last year, but only one in every eight this year, and we talked about Arkansas moving her up in the lineup. Now batting in the two hole, and she's now homered in three of four games since being in the two hole. And I'll tell you, Josh, what makes Briella so good, uh, there's a lot of things that make Briella so good, but it's, it's the fact that she can hit both sides of the plate successfully, and she has that approach to where she lets the ball travel so deep before making a decision and pulling that trigger to go. They get the fly out here. Veteran Culver making the catch. Looking for the bunt. Oh. 
starting pitcher for South Dakota State, Shannon Lacey. That pitch count was really up there early on. Thanks to a double play last inning, managed to work through pretty quickly. But, you know, early in this game, first five batters reached safely. Looked like Arkansas might get into the bullpen in the first inning. Showed a lot of toughness working out of it. She showed a lot of resiliency. And I'll tell you, at the beginning of the game, she was overthrowing a little bit. She was getting outside of the zone. Um, she was throwing her drop ball pretty much halfway out of the hand. It, it was starting out as a ball. Her drop ball, second inning on, has been so much more effective staying through the zone. That's the bunt she was looking ah. for, but that is terrific defense over at third base from Cheyenne Masterson. Beautiful defense by Masterson. You can't draw it up much better than that. She grabs the bunt. We'll see it here. She crashes in, grabs the bunt with her glove, and just throws off of that right leg quickly. Talk about a quick transfer. Nia Carter's fast. Masterson's transfer right there was faster. Ryland Hedgecock started the two-out rally back in the bottom of the fourth that right now is the difference in the ball game. Hard one hopper. Masterson takes care of another. That's a one, two, three inning for Shannon Lacey and the Jackrabbits. Last chance right where they want it. It's the top of the order here that'll try to do some damage in the seventh, but Hannah Kamen's in out of the bullpen in the fourth. Sydney, she sat down all seven she's faced. Kimmons in, she is elite coming out of the bullpen. It's because she's just so crafty. It takes a while to get to get the, the view of what she throws because she does throw so many different pitches. But for SDSU, this is right where you want to be at the top of your lineup. And in this moment, being down by one run, it is stay within the zone, don't expand the zone. Dig in, find a way to get this leadoff hitter, Jiraki, on base, and then figure out how to move runners and come up clutch to drive in a run. A strikeout and a walk for Jiraki since that home run in the first inning. One, two. Couldn't get her to chase that one. Flash back to the first inning. Start the game off, Jiraki. This ball is up and in by Robin Heron, and she just drives it. Such a gritty first at bat to set the tone to start the game. Bounces this to short. And just in time, close play. Lauren Kamen's in. And looks like we're going to go to a review. Obviously, that the ball gets in the glove and her foot touches the front of the bag. I think she's safe. It looks like her foot does hit that front part of the bag right as the ball is getting into the glove. I guess we'll see here. And the rolling is out. Well, there you go. It's got to be significant to be able to overturn it. And you know, for, close. for Coach McSweeney, you want to challenge that and at least review it. This is your last chance offensively to tie the game. If not, go ahead. First pitch. Bernard right back to the circle. Kamenzen takes care of it. The Razorbacks are one out away. Cayman's in, fielding her position so well. That's when P, where PFPs come in handy. Oh. 
want to get past this Jackrabbit team. One you've got to slow down is Osmondson. She's been easily the best hitter so far here in 2024, and it seems only fitting that it comes down to this for Kamenson to try to close it out. Hannah looking to get her fourth win of the year, improved to 4-0 in this long relief outing. Long in terms of innings, but it's been about as efficient as you could ask for, has not allowed a base runner. Just caught the upper outside corner. And last season, Cameron Zinn, she started a lot of games for the Arkansas staff. She was named to the All-SEC second team this season. We're seeing her come in in relief quite often so far throughout this beginning part of the season. This ball lifted up into left, playable. Making the catch, Reagan Kramer, and this ball game is over. Arkansas knew they were gonna have their hands full in the opener of this Wupik Classic, and